Shalom, Rastafari, Assalamu alaikum, peace to the kings and the queens of the earth. I want to give a big salute and shout out to everybody on this Wednesday. If you're on the East Coast, you up north, you in Buffalo, you in New York, you in Jersey, <laughs> please be careful about the air quality today. Um, we got some, some fires that started off in the Quebec area and the wind has pushed them down to all the areas. So the quality of the air might be a little tough. We got asthma, all that stuff. Please be careful today. Um, today I want to ju just talk, it's a little bit of a tragedy, but these are the things, these are the voices, this is the role that I've taken to, you know, spread the awareness uh, amongst the people who I might be around who might not know. So there was a tragic event that had happened over the weekend where a black mother down in Florida was going to a house to retrieve her kid's iPad that they had, apparently. And literally the neighbor, the female neighbor, who was an old white lady, I'm not going to say her name, um, was shot in the chest and killed right in front of her 10 year old uh, son. So the name of this this queen that we lost is uh, A.J. Owens. And um, the story is pretty tragic. The story is angering, but it's one of those stories that I have to say. I have to get the awareness out. So apparently this. Um, this white uh, scumbag lady uh, was having a problem with the kids who were playing across the street in the field. She was already yelling slurs at them, whatever. Um, then she actually threw a roller skate at them as well for no, for no whatever reason. Um, one of the older ladies, uh, I guess she had taken one of the iPads or something. <clears throat> one of the older siblings, the 10 year old, over there knocked on the door. She uh, skirted her away and got her off and did whatever. And then the the 10 year old went back and obviously got her mom and her mom went to the house. Probably to talk as an adult to see what the hell was going on. Why are you yelling at my kids? My kids are playing outside and not on your yard, not doing anything. And she just shot through the door and killed her uh, and shot her in the chest. Um, she wasn't immediately arrested. There was there. They took protests. They took people lining up outside her house. And um, they took a lot of people calling up for a while. She was free for about two days because of the Florida stand your ground laws. They had to go over the evidence. Um, apparently, you know, obviously she lied. She tried to say that the, of course, they always lie on black people because we're always the scary, aggressive ones. So it's, they try to go for the gusto and say that, yeah, the, you know, the first time these people shot this woman through, uh, shot this woman through the door that she, was in turn trying to break the door down when she wasn't. She knocked on the door and was shot through it. Um, they also had video uh, camera footage and she was also shot right in front of her 10 year old, again, 10 year old daughter. So she had the um, the cameras obviously um, were there and they made an arrest. It looks like yesterday, I believe, or today. I think it was today, yesterday when I, when I was hearing. So she was been arrested for manslaughter and um, thank God that, you know, we'll try to see what what justice, um, but the, the ultimate thing is this stand your ground law down in Florida has given some people the, um, the false green light that they can just pretty much shoot anybody who they think is they're scared of. And this goes back to the Trayvon Martin situation. This goes back to scumbag uh, Zimmerman Basically, you know, a situation where uh, Trayvon is, is fighting for his life, beating this dude, he's not killing you, and you shoot him and kill him, and somehow that's legal. The stand your ground law basically states that if, if you have a ground, you stand your ground, and someone attacks that ground, they could be shot, or they could be, um, what do they say? They could be handled or assessed in a way that could be deadly. That gives people like these racist fucks... Um, Again, a false pretense that they can just literally shoot anybody who they want to shoot. This woman, this this queen, this lady, just like any other mother, was shot right in front of her kids. Let that, 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 that be known right now, you know, because any mother is going to mother bear this shit, right? Your kids are playing outside and not bothering nobody. Some old lady tries to fucking, you know, deter their time. And you try to be an adult by walking over there and talking to them face to face and you get shot. Not only do you get shot, you die, and you, you get shot, and you get shot in the chest right in front of your your 10-year-old. And you're talking about some psychological 
um, events or psychological things that would happen in the vision form for these kids that they would never forget. Seeing your, seeing your leader, seeing your protector, seeing your provider shot right in front of you for no reason and suddenly gone. That's going to take some serious psychological help. And when you see these people who do these things, they ultimately are racist. They, it, almost like it boils over. See, when I think about what's going on, these old people, <clears throat> especially old, some old Caucasian people, especially in the South, you got to understand, they, you know, when, you, when they're 65, 75, 80 some years old, subtract that number and, and take to when they were born. They weren't born in the 80s. They weren't born in the 70s. or so. They were born in the 50s. You know what I'm saying? Some of these people were born in the 40s. Right? And so that means that at 15, at 16 years old, they had no problem segregating themselves from everything else. They had no problem knowing that black people couldn't vote. They had problem, no problem knowing that black people couldn't do hardly anything. They had no problem knowing that indigenous people were being wiped out continuously. They had no problem seeing the racial situations then because it did not affect them. Right? They weren't even living in their same neighborhoods. They weren't, they weren't living. They probably weren't living next door to the peoples like that in the 50s and 60s and 70s, especially in the South. So they, they never really, if you have, and you, you, we've all met these people who are closed-minded people. They stay inside. They don't watch the news. They have their mentality. They will never change. They will never evolve. They, I mean, I have continuously walked down the street, seen an old white lady, and, and like this lady kind of like, does her damnest to get out of the way like I'm the trouble. I don't look mean. I don't whatever. As a matter of fact, you should probably get close to me. I'm healthy. I'm a nice person. And I don't look like I'm going to kill somebody. I'm not smiling at everybody like an idiot. But you know what I'm trying to say? Like, I've seen that plenty of times. I've seen people lock the door. I've seen people clutch their purse. I've seen people, you know, it's an automatic instinct thing. And it's kind of funny because it should be vice versa. <laughs> like, you clutching the purse because of us. But it's your people who, anyway... <clears throat> so these things I have to continue to talk about because of the fact of how the treatment is and how and this is Orlando, Florida now. This is Orlando. I live in Orlando. And um, the racial situations that are continuing to happen, this is not the first time. All right. I just had a podcast about a a young king who was shot. So luckily, he survived. But same type of scenario. He went to the wrong house because he was looking for the he was the house was next door to go pick up his siblings and he was shot and almost killed. Right. So why are we met with such aggression? Right. It's almost like when we it's almost like when we when we're in your in your in your face all of a sudden it's if you if you had no fear if there wasn't a reason you would and you you know what I mean you wouldn't. Sh- grab the gun right away why are you so threatened by black people who would just happen to be knocking on your door those are those signs of this this racist system and this racist ideology and, and these ideas are embedded in some people almost in their dna right because i guarantee if aj owens was was melissa bald you know bald lake or something like that you know or whatever and white as snow she wouldn't and the kids were white she wouldn't even hadn't said one thing she definitely wouldn't shot through the shoot through the door at some lady who was knocking on the door, just trying to be like, "Why are you yelling at my kids?" So we are always met with with tough aggression, no matter where we're at, and sometimes it doesn't even matter what race it is. This has nothing to do with like these white people. That are, I'm at that notion now that there's a lot of, you know, other ethnicities that it's not just about you know these white racist people. It's it's it's. I'm in a situation and I've observed from the lion eye view that pretty much every other race, all right, <laughs> has a disdain for black people. We don't have disdain for everybody else, but they do for us because there is no ethnicity that has ever treated the way we are treated, no matter where. You know, you don't hear this happening to any other ethnicities or races like that. Not in this form, not in this aggressiveness. This is the second time. Same state, too. So we we continue, and I, I, I have to report it. I get tired of reporting it because I have to really come to a, a non-angry place. Um, I don't want to hear 
from the people. What do we do? I, I heard that five years ago. What it's going to stop? But we're back to where we we are literally back to where it was before George Floyd. All right, there's no difference. There was never going to be a difference. These people are still out here. So in conclusion, I say strap up. Be careful where you're at. You know, if you go to Florida and have plans to go to Florida, strap up. Just know what what what, what state you're in. And stay out of the way, right? Now, this is a situation where you're going to defend your kids. That's why it's tragic, right? There's things that, you know, we will all die for. We will die for our friends. We will die for our family. And if you're a real man and there's a female in the room and someone comes out, comes in the room shooting and you have a gun, you're not going to just run away. You're going to shoot back and go out with a bang and, and do everything you can to protect that woman first and those kids first. Real men know it's women and kids first, Right? So in order to, you know, I mean, there's if Allah wills it, then you will, you know, there's nothing you can stop it from happening. But protecting yourself is an order that is from anything, you know, from the most high to down to the to the to the left, to the right side. You know what I mean? It's it's something that I think everybody should do, should arm themselves um, the correct way. If you don't want to carry anything, you throw hands defend yourself but don't um think that this can't happen to you because this is something simple and life is so short you know one day you're you're raising your kids next day you're trying to defend your kids and this old lady shoots you through the fucking door and yeah you should be arrested manslaughter thrown in jail for life um but you know what's funny is that i guarantee this lady's going to get bonded out by somehow Guarantee there's going to be somebody who's going to pay for her defense. See, there's a, there, there's a different, there's a different secret little racial machine that continues to try to defend people who do these things, right? Like Kid Rock donated money to the defense of that military guy who choked out that guy on the uh, the train for no reason. So we, we as a people need to protect our own, do for ourselves, and to me, be more aggressive when it comes to the protest, not just marching. You see somebody do some shit like that, call their name out and outlaw them and take their money out of their pocket. Flat out. So that's just my little rant for Wednesday. Things like this happen, <clears throat> and I might have a different subject that I was going to talk about, but I digress and just be like, you know, when the spirit calls and something like something like this happens, I'm not just going to not talk about it. Um, I think like there's a lot of people who don't talk about it who should be talking about it, especially up here in Canada. But that's no here, no here or there. You know, people after George Floyd and, and it got stopped being trendy. All of a sudden, people went back to their homes. Meanwhile, my people down south are still getting killed, left and right, and that's one of the reasons why I have a call to go back because it's like I want to fight. I want to be around people who want to fight as well, not people who want to be trendy, not people who want to step up when it's, you know, when everybody else is stepping up. But it's clear that y'all don't really go through the same shit we go through up down up there. So if I'm, if I'm the only one talking about it on a major level, what does that say to you? You know, there's a couple of people I know, my, my BLMs over here in London, they did well, they, they posted some shit, but... I can call out about another 15 or 20 organizations that I have withdrew myself from because of their silence up here. And it's apparent that you really don't either care or lazy or you're focused on more of the Caribbean and the African vibes, which is which is your choice. But don't join in a fight then the next time. Stay your ass up there. Much love, yo.